Welcome back, YouTubers, gamers, everybody out there on the internet. Let's go ahead and get 2024 started with the first video of the year, and today we're going to be focusing on Cyberpunk 2077. So we're going to kick the year off with a video that's going to just kind of talk about where modding's at now currently in Cyberpunk 2077 and how you should go about it. Whether you should use Vortex, if you should manually mod, where to get your mods from, places you can find things. So let's just go ahead and get it started. This year I'm going to go ahead and keep the channel going in the same direction. So I'd appreciate every single like and follow for the channel. So. Without further ado, let's go ahead and do it. So the first thing I want to look at is what's going on with Cyberpunk modding. 2023 saw Cyberpunk modding make some pretty big leaps forward. And then we ran into the fall with the release of 2.0 and followed by that was Phantom Liberty. And because of that, modding kind of stumbled and kind of slowed down because all of our dependency and the larger mods constantly had the update. But recently I decided to go ahead and take a real deep dive into seeing what new mods have come out here in 2024. And I can tell you now that there are some really good mods. So now on to modding. Nexus is where you're going to want to find most of your mods. I'll go ahead and put the link for that in the description. I'll probably put it in the first pinned comment as well, along with some other links that you guys may need throughout this video. Then outside of the Nexus, there are different places that you can find mods, but the only one that I'd really recommend is going to be found on the official Cyberpunk 2077 Mods Discord page. They often release early versions of mods there, as well as having live chat to assist with many of the most popular mods. Over on the side here, you can see that there's channels for specific mod creators or some of the specific dependency mods. And it's really a safe and easy way to get answers or information if you happen to have any questions. They also keep you updated after any game updates come out so you can better track this mod status and know when the updates for are more than likely going to roll out. They also have links, as I said, to their GitHub page if needed. Again, this is just a safe place to make sure you're getting the correct links and information directly from the creators of the mods or from their moderators. Now, onto the reason that everybody's probably here, and that is installing mods, and that's going to bring us back over to Nexus. The first thing is finding mods. And if you've already been modding Cyberpunk over the past year or more, then you likely already have an idea of what's out there. You've seen what there is, and you likely already know the kind of mods that you're going to be interested in. But if you're new, then you have a very deep rabbit hole that could take you down it for days and days. So to make this a little easier, I suggest using the following sorting method. When at the homepage for Cyberpunk mods, click up here over on the right above the hot mods, which takes you to a page that you can filter. This default is set with the newest mods that have come out over on Nexus. And some of the hot mods, meaning those that are most popular and have come out the most recently and have a lot of attention, traffic, and downloads. But what we want is something different. So move over here to the filter boxes over here at the top right of the mod list. And in the first box, we want to change this to all time. And then in the second box, we want to go to trending. I strongly suggest trending because this will filter out older mods that may be extremely outdated or no longer working but they still have a very high number of downloads due to being popular at one time or just having been around for a while. And this is especially important for people just getting into modding. It allows you, like I said, to filter out those ones that you really don't want to be downloading because they, they've just been, no, they're abandoned, you know, they're no longer working. And this is going to sort the list and give you a mix of new and old mods based on popularity, how well they're upkept, how many downloads there are. These are going to be the ones that obviously are getting the most traffic. And then once you get used to what's out there and you've spent a few days on the page, maybe you've already got your mod order set up in a week or so from now, and you said you want to go back, you can now go in here and instead of selecting all time, you can minimize it. You can search January 1st and then set the end date over here to today, whatever today is. And it's going to allow you to see just what's happening more right now and then weed out all the older mods that you've probably already gotten. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to get to installation and with Cyberpunk 2077 you have two options. You can use Vortex which is available over on the Nexus and you can also manually install and we're first going to look at Vortex using Vortex. Hopefully you guys are familiar with it. The problem with Vortex is that it's had issues since the very beginning with Cyberpunk and it continues to and because of that a lot of the mod authors are going to ask or state outright that you manually install their mods. You could have 40, 60, 80, 100 mods installed for Cyberpunk 2077 through Vortex 
and he may have no problems at all. So I'm not saying that you can't use it, but I am letting you know that you can run into issues with mods firing incorrectly. The installation may be partially being in there because Vortex wants to put another mod overriding it, even though it's not specifically saying that it's overriding it. So there can be troubles in it, but it also can, you know, it can be done very easily. One of the main things with Vortex is always going to be the ease and just the ability to have everything managed for you. Here I'll go ahead and use Fallout 4. And if you go over here to mods, you're going to be able to see how nicely it organizes everything for you. You're going to have everything here. You can sort it by the bond name, categories, endorse. It's going to show you what version you have. It's going to let you know when it needs updated. Now there is an alternative that we could do that is not as good as this but close to if we manually install, and I'm gonna show you that by using things that are available to us on Nexus. But we'll get into that in a little bit. We're gonna focus on Vortex. With Vortex, there's really not much you have to do. You have to get Vortex installed, and then the only thing that you really should make sure that gets done is for setting up where your mods are going to end up at. And to do that, it's relatively easy when you're in the game here. Over here, you're going to go to settings. By the way, again, this is Fallout because I will not be installing any mods through uh, Vortex for 7.77. But anyways, you're going to go to mods, or I'm sorry, you're going to go to settings. You're going to want to go over to downloads. And here in the downloads, you can set up where they're going to be installing. And I think this is important because you're going to, if you install a lot of mods, you're going to have a lot of space used up. You're going to be able to want to find your mods and where they're located at on your computer. By default, I think this puts it somewhere on the C drive. I'm just going to go ahead and show you by downloading a mod. Also here, you can just click check for updates. It's going to sit here. It's going to automatically check for you. There you go. Zero updates needed. So it is really nice to have. And one that I really do want because I haven't done it yet is America Rising 2. I always recommend reading through the description. Make sure you know everything that's going on before you download a mod. Make sure that you don't have anything that does the exact same thing and would cause a conflict. Once you feel safe about it, go over here, check the posts, see if there's a lot of negative comments about it or comments about it being broken or if it was broken or people were having issues. A lot of times the mod author will come right in here and will explain like what maybe is happening and what you can do to fix it. So this is a really good place just to get answers before you go out and start asking for them. And then to download it, if you're using Vortex, it's gonna come over here. You're gonna click on Mod Manager Download and you're gonna click on Slow Download unless you pay for premium. And then it's going to begin to download. And then once it's finished, you're gonna go ahead and see up here. It's gonna go ahead and say Download Finish. Go ahead and click on Install. See right here, America Rising 2, Legacy of the Enclave. Installation begins. And then we're going to wait for that to go. And then go ahead and enable it. And once you enable it, you'll see that the mod will activate as well as installing the plugin. And that's how you install mods with Vortex. Vortex does a lot of other things. And if you really want to get into it and learn a lot about it, I suggest just going right up to the top. You're not going to find a better place, but here in the tutorials, you're going to go ahead and click on install mods. And you're going to see a video by Gopher. This is an amazing video. It was set up kind of explaining how to download mods for Skyrim and Fallout, but it's going to be the same thing with Cyberpunk. All right, now to show you how to install mods manually for Cyberpunk 2077. And as I said before, Vortex gives you one great thing, and that's the fact that it manages all of your mods. It gives you a list. It shows you when things need to be updated. You're not going to get that if you're manually downloading, but there is a way that you can get a list almost just as good and a way that you can track and manage your mods. Now, if you go down here, we're just going to look here, and as usual, I'm going to go ahead and click on the hot mods. You're going to go up here and decide what you want to search by. I'm going to do like we did before. I'm going to go all time, and I'm going to go to trending. Now, anytime you download a mod over on Nexus, as long as you're logged in, it's going to show you that there's an update available if you haven't downloaded the mod since the mod was last updated. If it just says downloaded, that means you've downloaded it since the last update, so you're probably good to go. First, we're going to show you how to make a list so that you can keep track of and manage all your mods if you decide to go down the route of manually installing. And that's super simple. It's this tracking button right here. I already have it tracked. So what I do is any mod that I download or I'm getting ready to download, I will go ahead and track this mod. And what this is going to do is if you come up here to mods and you go to tracked mods, it's going to show you a nice clean list of every mod you have tracked. 
Now, if you keep your track mods only to the mods in your current play order, then you're always going to have a list and it's going to sort it by whatever you want. In this case, by default, it's sorted by last updated. So it's showing me the last state the mod was updated. And then next to that, it is showing me the last state that I downloaded. These mods here are ones I'm going to be trying out for a new video. So as you see, I haven't downloaded them yet. And as long as you're only tracking the mods again that you have in your play order, you have a list that's almost just as good to manage as you would get from Vortex. Now, the one difference is going to be that you are going to have to manually install them and you don't have a mod manager to do that. So let's go back to Cyber Engine Tweaks that we were just at a moment ago. And this is one of my track mods. We're going to come down here and I recommend, as always, read the page first and always check the posts to make sure that there's not a big problem with the mod right now. It gives you an idea of where the mod's at. You don't want to download mods that have huge issues. It's something that you can check on. And see once it's updated but i would definitely recommend that if there's a lot of problems with it maybe after a patch or something like that just just hold off on it and get it at some other time now to download super simple we're going to come over here we're going to go to files and instead of using mod manager we're going to go ahead and go to manual download it's going to take us back to the page we're going to slow download and it's going to download it directly to your computer. By default, that's probably going to send it to your downloads folder. I have my own folder where I drop all the mods in that I'm getting ready to install. That's right over here. I just made a file called Cyberpunk 2077 Mods. Now, the other thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go over here and you're going to want to open another window that's going to take you to the game's directory. I'm using the GOG version, so for me, it's going to be GOG and then Cyberpunk 2077. If you're using the Steam version, you're gonna find it in wherever your Steam folder is located. Then you're gonna go down to Steam Apps, you're gonna go to Common, and you're gonna have a list of all the different games that you currently have installed on Steam. If I had Cyberpunk 2077 installed, I would go ahead and click that folder. So let's go ahead and go back here as I'm using the GOG version. And the way you know you're in the right folder is you're going to see the Cyberpunk 2077 game launcher. The executable file is gonna be located in here. So we're gonna go ahead and go back over here. This is Cyber Engine Tweaks, which I just downloaded. So I'm gonna go ahead and unpack this. So I'm gonna extract it here. All right, now it gives me one folder. That's what was in there. That was the bin. If you look over here, you're gonna see bin. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this folder, all the contents in it, and then drag it over here, move to Cyberpunk 2077 folder, and I'm gonna drop it in. And there it is, it's overriding 19 files from the previous version that I had. So I'm gonna click replace. Now, if you haven't installed it before, you're not gonna get that prompt. And we are done. All right, let's go ahead and do that one more time. Hopefully there's more files in this one. This is tweak-xl. This is another dependency mod, probably one that you're gonna be downloading if you download a handful of mods. I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna go ahead and go to manual download. And it's going to let me know here that I need Red 4 EXT, which I have. So I have the dependencies for it. I'm going to click download, slow download. And once downloaded again, we're going to go ahead and extract here. With this one, we get two different folders, the R6 folder and the Red 4 EXT folder. Remember that Red 4 EXT was a dependency, so it required being installed for this mod to be installed. So Red 4 EXT has already put its own folder here. So again, we're gonna take the contents of this mod. We're going to drag both files over to here. We're going to drop them in. And again, it's replacing it because I do have previous versions of this mod installed. And we see now that the file path sent everything from the mod into the R6 folder and the Red 4 EXT folder. And that is pretty much it. That's how you download and install mods manually. No longer does it say that I need an update says that I downloaded it on April 20th and the last update was on April 4th. So I clearly have the most recent version of that. And the same is for Tweak XL. Go here, it no longer says that there's an update available. My last date of download was April 20th. The mod was last updated on the 11th.
And yeah, hopefully that will help a few of you out out there, especially those of you that are new to modding. There are a lot of people that are getting into these games and getting into modding now, and it's really great to see the community going the way it is. I'm going to be showcasing mods for Cyberpunk 2077, as well as other games. We're going to be looking at all kinds of stuff, especially some of those big DLC size mods and some of the new mods that have come out for Fallout 4, because I'm getting that itch anyways. Thank you guys. Drop a like, follow the channel, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.